so in the next part of the video i would like to walk you guys through on how to set up sanity which is the content management system that we are going to be using so first of all go to the browser and in here i'll you to go for the particular website called sanity.io i just need to go to login and i already happen to have my own account so that you'll be also need to be having your own account too so just click on create new project and this is the first step use our cli click on this copy this and go to our code and in our terminal right here i have to open this particular terminal on my other site and like to paste that particular cdn link i just copy just paste it right here and hit enter and there you go so now as you can see it's actually asking for which particular source to use i'll have to use my new project so in this case i'm going to use a new project and for the project name right here i'll have to give shop as well and here it's asking for using the default configuration in this case i'll give yes and this gives i just give yes for this in this case it's, it's used do you want to use typescript in this case yes also and of course asking for sanity studio yes i would like to make use of that particular feature as well now it's asking for do you like to use the nexus app directory for routes in this case yes and as you can see here what route did you want to use for studio just type slash studio enter and as you can see here select project template in this case let's go for clean project with no predefined schema so let it enter and as you can see here it says would you like to add project id and data set to your env file yes in this case i have to add yes and in this case you'll see it downloading and installing all the required packages for sanity and there you go right now i have already installed the sanity into our project as you can see right here we happen to have this particular studio and also we happen to have this particular sanity folder created and this is where we'll be storing all the schemas that are required and let's actually run this particular sanity by typing npx sanity def and hit enter and this will install the required missing dependencies and there you go right now we happen to have this particular local host link generated so just need to copy this and open it in the browser now as you can see in this particular browser there seems to be an error with this particular next public sanity data set so in our code you'll be able to find that particular issue that's actually causing inside this particular env that falls under sanity and there you go as you can see right here it's next underscore public underscore sanity and underscore data set this is not actually able to be found by this particular browser but particular sanity so just need to be replacing this particular value of this directly from ERP. so as you can see right here we happen to have next public sanity data set just need to copy production just replace it with this particular process or env for next public sanity data set just need to be having its production like this and if you hit enter the next thing will be there's another error here next public sanity project id so it's also coming from this particular env file as well and just need to copy this and just need to replace it with this particular project id that's coming from env basically this and if you go back to our this particular sanity studio you'll be able to find you're able to solve that particular error and of course need to be just log in to that particular account that you've used right here and in this case i like to use my account and there you go this is what you'll be able to have once you have already set up your sanity and the next thing is to add schemas schemas are the ones that contains the data sets of your database so in this case let's say you would like to have a database of products so in that particular products database you need to be having a table of all the required fields so there needs to be a table for products in which you are you must be having all the data fields which example the name of a particular product the price of a product description the image and all those very essential data fields of a particular product should be kept inside these particular schemas so it's more like creating a database 
field name. So let's head back to our code and in our code right here, I'll like to make another new folder called schemas right inside this particular sanity folder. So I'm going to create a new folder called schemas. And inside this particular schemas folder, I'm going to create another new file called product schema.ts. And inside here, I'd like to keep all this particular schemas of a particular product. And inside this particular file, I'd like to have, I'd like to import two of the most important sanity functions. So this can let like say import, open curly braces. And first is I'll be calling define field. It's coming from directly from sanity right here. And of course, there's another file called define type. And these are the two functions that we'll be using that's coming from Sanity. Next thing is to actually add particular schema. And of course, well, I'm going to like create a new variable called product. And inside here, I'd like to define, call this particular define type function. And once I call it, you must be having a bracket and also a curly braces inside here. And inside here is where, where you'll be placing all the, the schema for a particular product. So in this case, I'd like to give the name first. So the name for the particular schema is going to be called product. And the next thing I'd like to add is called title, in which I'd like to add products. Following, I'd like to add type. And the type of this particular schema is going to be document. And also, I'll be adding fields so that it can actually have all the required data fields for this particular table. So in this case, I have to add fields array. And inside this field array is where I'll be placing all the name of that particular attributes of a particular schema. So in this case, of course, I'm going to be making use of this particular defined field right here. So just by having right here, inside here, you also must be having a bracket and curly braces like this. And inside here, I have to add name. And the name for this particular field is, is going to be uh, the name for a particular product and followed by title. It's going to be, I just going to say name, like this, followed by type. And the type here is going to be string. And yeah, that's the name. And besides that, I like to have another field called slug. And uh, well, let let's just need to follow exactly like how I did right here. Just need to be having copying this pasting it right here, but just change the name slug and this particular title to capital S slug. And the type here is going to be slug instead. So it's kind of different from what it's been defined right here. And for slug, we need to give options. And this particular option should be having an object for source name. And it just looks for the source that's coming from here. Next up, I'd like to give images. So let me just copy again this particular schema. The third data field right here, I'd like to give for images. And the title is going to be called images as well with capital I. And the type right here is going to be array. And of course, the, the fourth data field is going to be what kind of array is it? So it's going to be an array for the array will be having a type. So yeah, in this case, I must be changing this particular off to an object that has an data type. for image like this, by the way. And and the next thing I have to add is description for a particular product. So in that way, we're able to have some description for a particular product. Just need to change the name, description, and the title description with a capital D. And the type right here is going to be string. We're just going to keep it like this. And we're going to have another pass data field. This case is going to be called price. And the title right here is going to be called first capital B price. And the type right here, it's not going to be a string, it's going to be a number. And there you go. Right now, we have already completed all this particular required data fields, which we will be needing when we're creating a new, adding a new data of product. And of course, don't you need to make sure to import, to export this particular file. So in this case, I'll say constant, export, export constant product. And there you go. Right now, we are able to make use of this particular product in our main schema file right here and in our main schema file right here you just need to call the product that we have just created inside types right here so this is here to add product like this and just click on this particular first option right here you're able to call your product right here 
And if you go to our browser that we are having our local host, and just to refresh the page, and there you go. Right now, you're able to have a brand new schema creator. Click on this, and you'll be able to have, yeah, as you can see, the products right here. But then in the, you don't have any products right here. So you can actually create one by clicking on this particular edit button, and you're able to add your first product right here. So in this case, I'd like to add my own first product. And there you go. I have already published a particular product, which, which is a pro product called AirPods Pro. And we must be able to see this particular products in our front end. So we need to head back to our code. And I'll have to go to the app file right here. We need to go to page.tsx. And of course, I'd like to make like an API request to fetch that particular data of a particular product. So in this case, I'll be using Grok. So Grok is a sanity function to fetch data from sanity cms so in this case let's go to go top right here and import grok and which is coming from next dash sanity like this and right inside this particular our main function we need to be creating a variable for products constant products and which you must be able to fetch that particular data that's coming from sanity so in this case i'll call client dot fetch and it's going to be uh, going to make a graphql request whereby i use rock followed by quotation mark right here and inside here i like to have this particular code which says underscore type uh, which refers to the name of the schema in this case we're going to be seeing product like this and in this case it's just looking for a product a schema named product it and then it just fetches whatever it's been stored inside here in the form of a date and of course you need to make sure to import the client as well so in this case I have to add import sanity is coming this client coming from sanity as well and the next thing is I'd like to see how whether is this particular product is it I have to console this particular products so in this case I have to add console log products and we must be able to see in our console in the bottom. So we go to the bottom right here. Now there seems to be some issue right here. If we check our our console right here, there seems to be an error. Uh, which related to receiving, fetching that particular product. And yeah, I think that's a, the only way where we can see solve the particular issue is just by adding a weight. And by adding a weight, we must be able to have this particular async by having a weight here, we must be adding async in the main file function right here. And so that it actually complements this particular function. So if you go to the bottom part right here, and there you go. Right now, we are able to have this particular array. And this array has contained all the required data that's coming from the sanity that we have created. In this case, we have we set up an AirPods Pro and that we happen to have the slug. And of course, the images are right here. And yeah, there you go. This is one way to test whether your sanity data that you have created inside that particular studio are able to be fetched in your front end. And yeah, that's the end of this particular part of the video. Now, on the next part, I'd like to walk you guys through on how to add all the front end components, for example, navbar and hero section and all the products. So let's get started.